Good day guys, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of Crypto Light. Our video today is Ripple vs Stella, friend or foe. This is a requested topic, but I've also noticed that in our community, there are quite a few people who are invested in both of these coins and have strong opinions about Stella and Ripple. This video is not trying to change your opinion, in fact it might reinforce your opinion, but because these two coins are such big players on the market, the third and the seven biggest market caps, especially for people who are new to the crypto space, I believe it's worthwhile knowing the relationship and the fundamentals of both of these coins so that we can each have an educated and accurate opinion of them. So without further ado, we will now try to do the most comprehensive summary of Ripple and Stella on YouTube. Sit back and enjoy. Most people who are invested into either Ripple or Stella will know that both Stella and Ripple had the same co-founder, Jack McCallop, and Stella was originally a fork of Ripple started by McCallop. Let me cover a bit of history about how Stella was born out of Ripple before going into a deep comparison of both of them and finally ending with a price prediction. There are two versions of history of how Stella was born out of Ripple. One version is pro-Ripple and revolves more around interpersonal relationships. The other is pro-Stella and revolves around the technical differences. The first version, which is pro-Ripple, states that a major part of why Jack McCallop left Ripple was due to his complicated relationship with co-founder of Stella, Joyce Kim. Apparently, while McCallop was still working in Ripple in 2014, he was introduced to Joyce Kim, who was CEO of a company Simple Honey. Shortly after that, he brought her over to Ripple. But whilst at Ripple, insiders say that she made things difficult by trying to play up her importance and that of McCallop. And her tenure at Ripple was only lasted for six weeks, and that was part of the reason why McCallop lost interest in the project. Around the same time, or slightly after it, Wells Fargo, a US banking giant, was considering how to become the first bank to embrace cryptocurrency. Now, McCallop was also the founder of Mt. Gox, and Mt. Gox had collapsed not long before this. Now, Ripple Labs CEO Chris Larson had more than 20 years relationship with Wells Fargo and was keen to make a deal with the bank. However, they told him that because of the Mt. Gox incident and McCallop's connection with Mt. Gox, they had to get him out of the company or they wouldn't bank Ripple. The ensuring turmoil within the company ultimately led to a meeting where McCallop tried to remove Ripple's current CEO Chris Larson by a vote. Apparently, every single person on the board had begged him not to choose between him and Chris, but he went ahead anyway. The end result was everyone chose Chris and McCallop was outvoted. This account came from New York Observer and was reposted on Coindesk. I placed the link below for you if you're interested to read it for yourself. Not surprisingly, McCallop indicated the article failed to capture the facts of the real story. Now, the second version, which is Pro Stella, is that Ripple as a blockchain project was targeting centralized institutions like banks. The team realized that they needed a separate branch to reach out to the smaller companies and individuals who needed day-to-day -day transactions. So that is where McCallop started Stella. Initially, Stella's coding was very similar to Ripple. However, increasingly, the team found that Ripple's coding did not suit the purposes of Stella in reaching out to their target population. And after a year, in 2015, Stella launched his own coding, which we'll talk more about later. And thus became an entirely new project. Stella's current consensus algorithm or coding is so different from Ripple that it has no longer any connection. It's no longer a fork, but a separate project. Rumors thrown into this version also report that McCallop was being bullied at Ripple due to his different ideas and then when McCallop left Ripple, he tried to dump all his XRP tokens but was stopped by Ripple going through a series of lawsuits. So unintentionally, thanks to Ripple's efforts, McCallop will probably be the first self-made billionaire against his best efforts. This version was pieced together from various sources, but the last bit of news from the rumors came from a Quora article back at the end of 2017 October and was written by David Schwartz, who is the chief cryptographer of Ripple. But even he admitted he could not claim to be unbiased and that there are parts of the account which even he was uncertain about, even though he himself was there. 
So I guess there are two sides to every coin, and unless you are one of the people personally involved, we will never know the complete accurate truth. Most likely the truth is a combination of everything involving relationships, philosophy and technical differences. Actually, before I go on guys, I forgot to tell you that there isn't going to be much on the screen for this video. This video, unlike any of our other videos, is totally narrative. So feel free to take yourself off the screen, turn off your screen, grab a snack and a beer while listening. Now let us take a look at the differences between Ripple and Stella, and we're going to split the differences between them into four categories, philosophical, technical, token use, and partnership. The first is philosophical. Now, Ripple is essentially a profit body with the aim to create payment networks with large financial institutions like banks. The people who will benefit the most from these profits will of course be the owners of Ripple. Stella, in contrast, is a not-for-profit organization with altruistic aims to provide greater access to the world's unbanked population and connect people to low-cost financial services to fight poverty and develop individual potential. So theoretically, the bulk of the profits of its system then goes to account holders. In terms of Stella's aim to develop indiv individual potential, they are an open source network and have an open ledger that anyone can view, access and join. Anyone can be a transaction validator on Stella, though some validators may not be relied on by all parties. So you can choose in other words. In contrast, Ripple is a closed source network where the general public cannot look at it or change it. It runs a permission ledger where Ripple itself determines who may act as a transaction validator on their network. This is one of the reasons, not the only one, but one of the reasons why Ripple is considered centralized. Stella is also much friendlier towards third-party developers. It hosts programs such as the Stella Build Challenge to reward builders who create useful technology on the Stella network. They also release a partnerships program that offers partners up to 2 million in Lumen grants. The second difference between them is their technical aspects. Now, as mentioned above, initially Stella shared a lot of Ripple coding and its code was called Stellar. However, about a year into its existence, they launched an entirely new payment system protocol known as Stella Core Protocol or SCP. Oh, no, sorry, called Stella Core, which uses the Stella Consensus Protocol that's called SCP. Now, in contrast, Ripple's protocol is the proof of correctness consensus mechanisms. Now, for the next few seconds, I'm going to get really technical in terms of the differences between the two systems because there's no way to explain it without technical terms. So if technicality doesn't appeal to you, take a 20 second stretch and come back. But if it does, these are the differences. Now, the Stellar Consensus Protocol is a very flexible system in terms of how its nodes configure their quorums. So they use blocks instead. Uh, they use quorums instead of blocks. It is explicitly designed to accommodate Byzantine failures. This is where the bad nodes lie, and different nodes trusting different subsets of the system. By contrast. Ripple uses a fixed 80% threshold and their analysis does not apply to cases in which different nodes have different sets of nodes to trust. So is Stella consensus protocol biases towards correctness at the expense of liveness? Ripple follows a model similar to Bitcoin which allows ledger forks to occur temporarily and relying on majority validation. There are other differences between the two systems at both the implementation and protocol level. For instance, Ripple allows freezing currency that one has issued, which Stella does not seem to support. Stella uses the ED25519 signature scheme and 32-byte public keys as addresses, while Ripple uses the ECDSA and the 20-byte hashes as addresses. At the implementation level, Stella's protocol is specified using Sun XDR, where Ripple uses a combination of Google protobufs and handwritten marshalling code. Alright guys, technical stuff over. Whew. We can start talking English again. Even though I didn't understand some of even I didn't understand some of that, but I've posted the links below where I've got all this information, so feel free to pour over it in your own time.
Performance rise, Ripple boasts a bigger number at 15,000 transactions per second. Stellar is 10,000 transactions per second. However, practically, Ripple is sitting about 3 to 4,000 transactions per second, and so is Stellar. Stellar has gone up to 3 or 4,000 transactions per second without any problem. In terms of actual transaction times, both of them sit at 2 to 5 seconds, so transaction performance, in my opinion, is really about the same. The third difference between them is looking at the token. Now, Stellar is explicitly inflationary, with 1% new coins being generated every year until as its seed fees are being recycled. Ripple, on the other hand, destroys the fees, meaning the total number of Ripple in existence is slowly diminishing over time. Currently, both their total supply at the moment is sitting about 100 million, so it's very similar. Now XRP or XRP token is the currency for Ripple Labs and currently Ripple Labs which is the main Ripple company has two products on the market. The first is XCurrent. XCurrent does cross-border transfers for banks and it does so very cheaply and quickly using Ripple's technology. Most of Ripple's bank's partners are using this technology. The big catch to this though is that you don't need to use XRP tokens in XCurrent. So a bank could be using Ripple technology for the advantage of the speed, but the token price won't go up because the token is not actually being used. XRapid is the next product of Ripple Labs that does require XRP to be used and its advantage is that it greatly increases liquidity. But at the moment, only 4 out of over 100 of Ripple's bank's partners are using it because they don't like the addition of a unknown uh, quantity like XRP token, especially with the volatility of the crypto market at the moment. So this is the major criticism and concern that people have of Ripple and that the lack of use of Ripple token will greatly hinder XRP's token price. Stellar, on the other hand, uses fees for every transaction and it collects the fees to distribute to account holders which account for the 1% new coins every year. The thing with Stellar though is that even though every transaction uses Stellar tokens or XLM tokens, the transaction is extremely cheap. You can do 600,000 transactions for about 1 cent. So that's ridiculously cheap and it's so cheap that there are concerns from its users that the transaction fees won't actually amount to any meaningful returns. So that's the criticism about um, Stellar's model. Now, another important thing to know about their token in terms of token distribution is about 62 of Ripple's coins in circulation currently are held and owned by Ripple. So they have a choice to sell it to the public. They've got some clause in place to say that the tokens are kept in a certain place and cannot be released until a certain date so as to prevent a potential dumping by the owners. So this kind of gives some reassurance to the token holders. But nonetheless, it's a fact that they own 62% of the current coins in circulation. Stellar, on the other hand, only owns 5% of its tokens and uses it mainly for developmental costs. Where Ripple sells its coins, Stellar gives the collected tokens to account holders for free every year. This is another reason why Ripple is seen as centralized and Stellar is seen as decentralized. Now, I'm going to branch off slightly here to address this whole issue of is Ripple centralized or decentralized? Because this is like huge big debate topic. Blockchain in terms of philosophy is a decentralized um, product. So many people who support blockchain products support the idea of decentralization and are very against Ripple because uh, they see Ripple as being centralized. So is Ripple centralized or decentralized? Now Ripple argues that because Ripple Labs, which is the mother company and XRP, which is the token, are technically different entities, even if Ripple Lab was to collapse. XRP as a currency would still exist, so technically they are a decentralized currency. So by definition, yes, they are a decentralized currency, you can't argue that. The thing though, okay, is that the fact that Ripple and XRP tokens are separate entities is not to XRP's benefit, it is to Ripple's lab's benefit, I think. It is more likely that the XRP token will die 
and Ripple Labs will survive than the other way around. Especially with the way that X Ripple Labs is building partnerships with banks in agreements that don't require the use of XRP token. So I don't think they're being fair to the token holders in that sense. And even though technically, okay, Ripple could put the case that it does meet the technical definition of decentralized currency when you look at the fact that they are holding 62 percent of the tokens in current circulation that they are a closed source network where the general public cannot look or change it and the fact that they are primarily targeting banks as their clientele who are large centralized institutions and the agreement they have with the bank places ripple technology under those banks not the other way around it seems to me that in spirit at least they are a centralized institution this is just my personal opinion so don't shoot me for it and i am to be honest very neutral about it i don't think poorly of ripple at all in fact just a few days ago i listed it as my top coin for the month of march but in all impartialness okay i feel that the project has a very centralized way of working again that's just my opinion and it doesn't make ripple a bad coin i personally have the stance that when it comes to investment i'm neutral i'll just go where the money is whether they are you know arguably centralized or decentralized now the fourth difference between ripple and stella lies in their partnerships Ripple's main partners are banks, and now they have American Express, MoneyGram, and Western Union on board as well. In terms of momentum and partnerships, to be honest, Ripple is second to none in the crypto world. It outperforms even Bitcoin. Stella's biggest partnership is IBM, and other notable partners include Deloitte, Stripe, Wansiang. The main target group for Stella remains small businesses and individuals, which is why in terms of names, their list of partners will never be as impressive as Ripple. It is worth pointing out here that for the bulk of their businesses, the two do not actually compete with each other. Where they do overlap though is in cross-border transactions. And as far as big companies go here, which is the way to compete in this uh, arena, Ripple definitely has the lead. But IBM as Stella's partner is a very significant player as well, so Stella's definitely still a competition. And also, you got to remember that there are many other popular cryptos like OMG who are competing for a piece of the pie. What you got to consider as well is that the pieces of the pie though is not evenly distributed. Between MoneyGram and Western Union, apparently they account for 70% of cross-border monetary transactions in South America and Southeast Asia. So if Stella and the other trans uh, transaction currencies want to have a chance, they're going to have to hit the market hard. They're going to have to market themselves, sell themselves and create alternative attractive options for cross-border transactions for the unbanked. Stella has the lowest fees and very competitive transaction times. So, I mean, personally, if it was me, I'll be using Stella over Ripple uh, for now as an individual player, not as a big bank. Yeah. The last thing to talk about is price prediction. Now, both coins are top 10 on the market cap and doing really well. They are both solid projects who are proving solid results in the market. And realistically speaking, I expect that both of them will see a rise in the future. Now, who is likely to see a bigger gain in time? My prediction is this. In the short term, in the very, very short term future, we're talking about the next few days to weeks, both their prices depend on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin tanks because of the Mt. Gox sell-off, every coin, including Stella and Ripple, are going to tank. So if you want to note their prices, whether they're going up or down, then Bitcoin is the coin to watch. In the medium term, we're talking a few weeks to months, I believe that Ripple will outperform Stella simply because the partnerships that they are bearing fruits with, starting with Colex announcement last week to use them in cross-border payments to Mexico, is building a huge momentum. Ripple's marketing is outstanding. And when the market starts to recover, okay, and you imagine that there are going to be new investors coming into the market wanting to invest in crypto, they don't have a lot of background or general knowledge about all the companies. The new investors are going to be super attractive to Ripple because first it's number three on the market cap and it's well known. It's got this huge price rise last year that, you know, is probably the best, if not the best of returns of 2017. So new investors are just going to be super attracted to it. And I think that new investors will pour money into Ripple over Stella in the medium term. In the long term, I think that Stella will offer better returns than Ripple. Why do I say that? Because I think the two of them currently have comparable technology, but yet Stella is only one-sixth the price of Ripple. 
it is undervalued and under recognized and i think that as his recognition goes up over time it will close the gap whether or not it can catch up to ripple i believe that it will close the gap meaning it will make a bigger gain than ripple in the long term I believe as well that the other reason why Stella is more likely to increase in price than Ripple in the long term, okay, is because of his, it seems to me to be more careful in terms of implementing actual use of his token. Stella now is not just a transactional currency, right? It is also a platform for ICOs and this year it's also launched its own exchange where Stella is the pairing. So both of these initiatives introduce massive use of Stella token and as we always say, the more a currency is being used, the more its price will go up. But seriously though, I've got to say that Stella needs to do a lot more marketing. The marketing sucks. It's almost non-existent. So that's my take for now, guys. Anything can change in the future. Ripple might introduce a mechanism that introduces XRP as a requirement in all its products. That will totally be game changing. Who knows? Anyway, this has been a really long post and I'm sorry I don't have any pretty pics or charts to put up. This is one of those posts that is all narrative, but there are some links in the description if you're keen to read them up for more information. But otherwise, thank you so much for joining us. If you like this video, give us a like and subscribe. Also drop us a comment or request. We love to do the videos, especially when we know that they are relevant to you guys like this one. Tomorrow we will be doing a coin review that is one of your requests. I think it's a cash or dent or dance, either one. So make sure you tune in for that. Well, have an awesome Sunday and we will catch you tomorrow.